Biological Control of Mulberry Pests. Dear students, in today's lecture, let us make an attempt to know about biological control of mulberry pests. Introduction Mulberry morus species constitutes the sole food plant of the silkworm Bombyx mori. It is therefore obvious that quality of mulberry leaf has a predominant influence on the growth and development of silkworm and the quality of cocoon. However, the process of mulberry leaf production is often hampered due to interference by insect pests. Being a perennial evergreen and high biomass producing plant, mulberry offers suitable conditions for feeding and breeding of these insects, often leading to both qualitative and quantitative loss in the foliage produced that too in the irrigated mulberry gardens where the foliage of superior quality is almost continuously available. Major Insect Pests of Mulberry Mulberry, like most of the other economic plantations and field crops, is attacked by a vast pest complex. Though frequent leaf harvesting and pruning of the shoot restricts the attack of pests, they still find enough time and place on mulberry for feeding and breeding, thus taking a heavy toll of mulberry. Though the number of pests attacking mulberry is too high, only a limited portion of it is economically important, especially in the southern sericulture belt of India. Insect pests such as mealybug, Macronelicoccus hirsutus, papaya mealybug, Paracoccus marginatus, thrips, pseudodendrothrips mori are the major sucking pests and leaf roller Diaphania pulverilentalis and Bihar hairy caterpillar Spilazoma obliqua are the defoliating pests which in total contributes in bringing down the leaf field by about 15 to 20 percent. These pests not only affect the leaf productivity but also quality. Therefore, it is very much essential to control these insect pests through suitable effective strategies. However, integrated pest management packages are being recommended to tackle the menace of mulberry pests which involves physical, chemical, mechanical, cultural and biological strategies. Among the EBU, biological control is regarded as a vital component. Let us know about implementation of biological control against mulberry pests here and there. What is biological control? Biological control is defined as the utilization of natural enemies to reduce the damage caused by noxious organisms to tolerable levels. The natural enemies include some of the insect species, both predatory and parasitic, disease causing microorganisms such as viruses, bacteria, fungi and protozoa, parasitic nematodes and predatory vertebrates. Debug in 1964 defined biological control as the action of parasites, predators or pathogens in maintaining another organism's population density at a lower average than would occur in their absence. Biological control of insect pests by utilizing microorganisms is also called microbial control. However, in sericulture, it is not recommended owing to their contamination problem to silkworms. Three major techniques of biological control. Biological control is achieved by Conservation and encouragement of indigenous natural enemies, importation or introduction or classical biological control, and augmentation. Number one, conservation and encouragement of indigenous natural enemies. Conservation is defined as the actions to preserve the natural enemies by environmental manipulations. The main objective of conservation is to protect and maintain existing natural enemy populations particularly the parasitoids. Here, we consider only those pest control measures that won't destroy the natural enemies. Important conservation measures are use selective insecticides which are safe to natural enemies, avoid cultural practices which are harmful to natural enemies, provide alternate hosts for natural enemies, provide pollen and nectar for adult natural enemies, Eco-feast crops 
can be grown which harbors host insects and on which the natural enemies thrive and perpetuate. Cultivate such variety that favor colonization of natural enemies. Preserve inactive stages of natural enemies. Number two, importation or introduction or classical biological control. It involves the introduction of a natural enemy into a new locality mainly to control introduced pests or exotic pests where they did not occur or originate naturally. It is also termed as classical biological control wherein co-evolved specialist natural enemies that is natural enemies with very restricted hosts are imported from the homeland of the pest of foreign land. When these natural enemies are successfully established, they will usually continue to control the pest populations. It becomes imminent when an insect pest is accidentally introduced into a new geographic area without its associated natural enemies. Example, recently an exotic sucking pest, Papaya millibug, Paracaucus marginatus, native to Mexico, got introduced into South India and severely affected the mulberry gardens in few districts of Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. When the management practices recommended to control pink millibug could not control papaya millibug effectively, an exotic parasitoid Acerophagus papaya was imported from Puerto Rico, multiplied and released in mulberry gardens to achieve full control over the pest, which not only saved the sericulture industry but also other horticultural crops such as papaya, vegetable crops, ornamental crops and other forest tree plantations such as teak. Number three, augmentation. It is the propagation or mass culturing and releasing of natural enemies to increase its population. There are two approaches for augmentation, inoculative release and inundative release. Inoculative releases, large number of individuals is released only once during the season and natural enemies are expected to reproduce and increase their population for that growing season. Hence control is expected from the progeny and subsequent generations only and not from the release itself. Example, release of Acerophagus papaya against papaya millibug. Inundative releases. It involves mass multiplication and periodic release of natural enemies when pest populations approach damaging levels. Natural enemies are not expected to reproduce and increase in numbers. Control is achieved through the released individuals and additional releases are only made when pest populations approach damaging levels. Example, release of Schimnus coxivora predatory beetles against millibug, release of Trichogramma chelonis egg parasitoid against mulberry leaf roller, release of Chrysoperla cornea predator against millibug, thrips and whitefly. Why biological control? Chemical control creates several serious problems like air and water pollution, health hazards, killing of beneficial insects, secondary pest outbreak, pest resistance, residual toxicity, etc. Therefore, for avoiding such toxic problems, biological control is a must and is potential living weapon over chemical control. Advantages of biological control. Biological control is safe to environment. It can be integrated well with other methods of pest control. It is self-propagating and self-perpetuating. Problem of pest resistance is not there. No harmful effects on humans, livestock and other organisms. It is virtually permanent. Biological control agents search and kill the target pests. Disadvantages of biological control. It is a slow process and takes long time. If alternate hosts of natural enemies are present in abundance, then pest control may not be to the desired extent. If climatic factors are unfavorable for the normal development of a natural enemy, there is every chance for the pest to multiply in more number. If the natural enemy is attacked by any hyperparasites in the locality, progress of the natural enemy will be adversely affected. Use of chemical pesticides adversely affects the population level of natural enemies. Important natural enemies found in mulberry gardens. In mulberry gardens, we come across with 
several natural limits which contribute a lot in keeping the pest populations in low level. They may be predators, parasites or parasitoids and even microorganisms. Predator, an organism that kills and eats more than one other organism during its life. Usually it is larger than the prey, exceptions, social insects such as ants. Examples, Cryptolemus montaderi and Schimnus coxivora ladybird beetles on mealybug, Blaptostethus palescens against thrips. Parasite, a parasite cannot live independently. It obtains nourishment from its host. Relationship lasts till the lifetime of the host. In a typical parasitic relationship, the parasite and host live side by side without lethal damage to the host. The parasite takes enough nutrients to thrive without preventing the host from reproducing. Example, head louse, body louse, etc. Parasitoid. A parasitoid is an insect parasite of an arthropod. Parasitic only in immature stages, destroys its host in the process of development and free living as an adult. Examples, egg parasitoid of leaf roller, Trichogramma chylonis. Nymphal parasitoids of papaya millibug, Acerophagus papaya, Anagaris loci and Pseudoleptomastix mexicana. Pupal parasitoid of leaf roller, Tetrasticus howardi. Different types of parasitoids. Different groups have been defined within parasites depending on their lifestyle. Idiobionts, a parasitoid whose larval growth is on or within a host which has been developmentally arrested at OV position. The host is usually relatively mature and concealed in a protected situation such as wood boring larvae or cocooned pre-pupae or pupae. Idiobionts have wide host range. Coinobionts, a parasitoid whose larval growth is on or within a host that continues to develop after oviposition. The host is often an early or mid instar larva, exposed or weakly concealed. Parasitoid development accelerates after the host has spun a cocoon or constructed a pupation chamber. Coinobionts are usually host specific. Coinobionts are further divided into endo and ectoparasitoids. Endoparasitoids, group of parasitoids that live and feed inside the host body. Example, Trichogramma chylonis. Ectoparasitoids live and feed externally on the host, though the parasitoids frequently are attached or embedded in the host's tissues. Example, Tetrasticus howardi. Hyperparasitoid, a parasitoid whose host is another parasite itself is known as a hyperparasitoid. Example, Nasolink thymus. Kinds of parasitism, simple parasitism, irrespective of number of eggs laid, the parasitoid attacks the host only once. Example, Apantelis tarragame on the larvae of Opicina arenocella, Goniosus nephantidis, etc. Superparasitism, phenomenon of parasitization of an individual host by more larvae of single species that can mature in the host. Examples, Apantelis glomeratus on Pyris brassica, Trichospilus pupivora on Opicina arenocella. Multiple parasitism, phenomenon of simultaneous parasitization of host individual by two or more different species of primary parasites at the same time. Example, Trichogramma telinomus and Tetrasticus, which attack eggs of Paddy's temborer, Syrphophaga incertilis. Superparasitism and multiple parasitism are generally regarded as undesirable situations since much reproductive capacity is wasted. Hyperparasitism, when a parasite itself is parasitized by another parasite. Example, Goniosus nepantitis is parasitized by Tetrasticus israeli. Most of the bethylids and braconids are hyperparasites. Now, qualities of an effective natural enemy. 
Coppel and Mertens in the year 1977 proposed a list of 10 desirable attributes of beneficial organisms to aid in assessment of their capabilities. They should be adaptable to the environmental condition, ecological capability. They should have host specificity, compatibility, narrow host range. They should multiply faster than the host. Reproductive potential, high fecundity should be there. Short life cycle and high female male ratio. High host searching capacity, amenable for easy culturing in laboratory. Dispersal capacity, free from hyperparasites. Synchronized life cycle with the host. For any biological control program, four principal ways are available. Number one, collection of parasites and predators from places where they have naturally developed or assembled in large numbers and releasing them in places where they are not found. Number two, collection of parasites from the host insects. Number three, rearing of natural enemies in large numbers under favorable conditions and releasing them whenever and wherever needed. Number four, importation or procurement of parasites, predators and other natural enemies from foreign countries. Establishment of insectry, a place where insects are housed or propagated or mass produced is called an insectry. India's first commercial insectry, BCRL, Biocontrol Research Laboratory was established in Bangalore during 1981. Since then, numerous companies have come up countrywide producing predators, mainly coccinellids and chrysopids, and a variety of parasitoids, notably Trichogramma species and its strains. There are 26 Central Integrated Pest Management Centers CIPMC, in India, in different states to produce biocontrol agents, including biopesticides, for augmentation. Still, availability of bioagents, especially at the local level, is a major constraint in promoting biocontrol. There are opportunities for small and medium enterprises as they can exploit pest control markets. Potential biocontrol agents against pink mealybug infesting mulberry. Ladybird beetles. Several species of ladybird beetles, which are known to feed voraciously on all the stages of pink millibug, Macronelicoccus hirsutus, that infest mulberry to cause sucra. Important among them are Cryptolemus montezeri, commonly known as Australian ladybird beetle, and Skimnus coxivora, it's an indigenous species. Now, Cryptolemus montezeri, both adults as well as grubs are known to predate on all the stages of the millibug. The male beetles can be distinguished from that of female by the coloration of first pair of legs. The first pair of legs in male beetle is brown and other two pairs are black, whereas in female all the three pairs are black. Skimnus coxivora. It is an indigenous coccinellid predator of pink pillybug. Adults are light yellowish with dark brown markings along the mid dorsal regions. Mass multiplication of Cryptolemus montezeri or Skimnus coxivora predatory beetles. Colony of pink millibug, Macrolycoccus hirsutus, is raised on sweet pumpkins. After 25 days, about 15 to 20 grams of mealybugs are scraped and put into a round plastic box having aerated lid. Mealybugs are exposed to a set of 10 pairs of Cryptolemus montezeri or 20 pairs of Skimnus coxivora beetles and kept closed. The beetles during the period of exposure feed on millibugs and deposit their eggs singly or in groups of 4 to 12. The grubs are visible in the round plastic boxes within 10 days of exposure. The young grubs feed on eggs and small millibugs, but as they grow, they become voracious and feed on all stages of the millibugs. Hence, sufficient host food should be ascertained once in two days till pupation. The first beetle from the round boxes starts emerging on 30th day of exposure to Cryptolemus montezeri or Skimnus coxivora adults. The beetles are collected daily and kept in separate containers for about 8 to 10 days to facilitate completion of 
mating and pre ovipation period the beetles are fed with honey 50 is to 50 from each round box about 375 cryptlemus montreri or 750 skimnus coxivora can be harvested mass production technology of acerophagus papaye a nymphal parasitoid of papaya mellibug protocol for mass production of acerophagus papaye has been developed by national bureau of agricultural important insects nbaii bangalore using potato sprouts as follows procure 2 months old potatoes wash in clean water and disinfect using 5% sodium hypochlorite solution in case of new potatoes where sprouting is not possible or delayed give a slight and superficial cut on the potatoes using sharp knife and treat with 1 ppm gibberellic acid solution that is 1 mg in 1 liter water for half an hour air dry the potatoes place over wet cloth in a tray in single layer cover with a black cloth and keep in dark humid place for germination or sprouting within a week good buds will sprout and are ready for infestation with the nymphs of papaya mellibug bring pest infested papaya leaf or any other host leaf with a colony of papaya mellibug and transfer it onto potato sprouts keep the mellibug infested potatoes with sprouts in cages and release the exotic parasitoid adults for parasitization cover the cages with black cloth for incubation after about 10 days transfer the potato sprouts with mummified papaya mellibux to wide mouthed jars and cover with cora cloth maintain a temperature of 27 to 28 degree centigrade and a relative humidity of 40 to 60 percent in the insect tray from 15th day onwards parasitoid adults start emerging in the jars which may be collected using aspirators and transferred to plastic vials with lids having minute holes for aeration release and conservation of acerophagus papaye in mulberry release the parasitoids in papaya mellibug infested mulberry gardens at the rate of 100 to 200 adults as early as possible as they are short lived once released and conserved the parasitoids will establish naturally and control the papaya mellibug on mulberry as well as on other crops on a long term basis the wayside weeds such as parthenium abitillon etc which are the alternate host of the pest will serve as a reservoir for the parasitoids when the mulberry gardens are pruned and facilitate further multiplication of parasitoids hence these weed plants should not be destroyed one should avoid using chemical insecticides so as to achieve better conservation of feed released parasitoids as well as to facilitate effective suppression of the papaya mellibug only under such a situation the parasitoids could bring about significant suppression of the pest populations in 6 months mass multiplication of trichogramma chelonis egg parasitoids trichogramma species are of common occurrence and distributed throughout the world they parasitize mainly the eggs of lepidopterans in india it is commercially available for the pest suppression in sugarcane cotton sorghum maize paddy borers and mulberry caterpillar pests trichogramma species are reared on the eggs of rice moth carcera cephalonica freshly collected eggs of carcera are cleaned of the scales and other foreign matters associated with these and are glued on the trichocards with uniform thin layer using 2% gum the sprinkling of the eggs is done either with a fine sieve which does not allow more than one or two eggs to pass through its hole at a time thus 18000 eggs or 1 cc of ultraviolet sterilized host eggs are glued on a trichocard of size 15 into 7.5 cm the adult parasitoids are provided with honey streaks 50% honey dissolved in water drawn on inner side of the glass jar and secured tightly with muslin cloth and rubber bands 
the egg cards are introduced into round glass bottles already containing the just emerged parasites and exposed for 28 to 48 hours the parasites readily parasitize the fresh eggs under dark condition or subdued light more than 90% parasitization takes place it is also estimated that parasites emerging from one egg card can parasitize 10 to 12 cards of similar size the parasitoid completes its life cycle in 7 to 9 days at 27 plus or minus 2 degree centigrade and 75 plus or minus 5 percent RH. Constraints in adoption of biological control. Absence of standard protocols for mass production of potential parasitoids and predators and their host insects. Low shelf life of biocontrol agents compounded by lack of refrigerated transport facilities. Absence of prediction models to determine the timing for production scale up and limited window of demand are some of the bottlenecks in commercialization. Lack of awareness among the farming community due to non-availability of such products with their input suppliers. Difficulty faced by farmers in switching over to use of live insects mainly due to differences in application methodology. The value of biological control in pest management has been well established. In spite of it, the method has not found as much practical application as it deserves to be. Insecticide application is not advisable in sericulture as the residual toxicity affects the silkworm. Hence, Biological control may be an ideal alternative to insecticides. However, difficulty in mass producing the natural enemies at economical cost and making them available at local level for timely releases is a major constraint in promoting biocontrol. Still, there are ample opportunities for small and medium entrepreneurs, educated youths, as well as progressive farmers to establish insect trees and exploit pest control markets.